when I was living in Thailand. My father came to visit one time. So I wanted to see if he would learn how to meditate for my teacher, John Fuang. So I went to John Fuang's hut. My father's first question was, given that he was a Christian, was that going to be an obstacle to the meditation? And John Fuang said, no, we're going to focus on the breath. The breath is common property all over the world. It doesn't belong to the Buddhas, it doesn't belong to the Christians, it belongs to everybody. When you get to know the breath, then you get to know your mind. And when we have issues that you see in the mind, where the mind is creating suffering for itself, then we can't talk directly about the mind. We don't have to talk about religion. Just talk about what the mind is doing that's creating it unnecessary suffering for itself. So focus on the breath. Watch it as it comes in, watch it as it goes out. Where do you feel the breathing process in the body? Focus your attention there and see if you can stay with those sensations, breath coming in, breath going out. Because in order to see the mind, first you have to catch it. An image from a John Fuang, he says, you try to catch eels, they just jump down into the mud and try to catch them, they just go slipping off every which way. What you've got to do is find something they like. You find some old dead animal, stick it in a jar, one of those big clay jars, and they stick that down in the mud and the eels will come on their own because that's what they like. Well, the mind likes a sense of ease, so provide it with a sense of ease by the way you breathe. So it feels good coming in, it feels good going out. That way you get the mind right here where you can watch it. And you can see what it's doing. Because the main cause of our suffering is we don't know what our minds are doing. We put a lot of things on automatic pilot, then go running off thinking about something else. It's like the owner of a corporation who tells people what to do and then leaves, goes off and travels around. And there's nobody to check up on the members of the corporation, so sometimes they do what they're told and sometimes they do other things. Yet it's their decisions are the ones that are actually shaping the product of the corporation. They're going to determine whether the corporation survives or not. The same way with the mind. There's a lot of layers of decisions being made in the mind. And if you're off wandering, thinking about the past, thinking about the future, these decisions are being made in the present moment by you don't know who. They're influenced by old urges, some of which may have been skillful at some point, but may not be skillful anymore, some of them which weren't even skillful to begin with. So you want to bring some light to this process, so stay right here. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out. As long as you're with the breath, you know you're with the present moment. And then you can see what the mind is doing in the present moment. But for the time being, don't go following it. Just stay with the breath as best you can. Resist any temptation to think about something else. Other thoughts may appear, but you don't have to follow them. And you find that you get to know your mind a lot better. And when the, you, you know the mind better, then you can get some control over it. And the suffering that you create for yourself just gets less and less and less.